All right, guys, from there, it might be kind of hard to see the colors, so I'm going to try to explain it. This is a proto board. You can plug all sorts of great stuff in here without having to solder stuff in place. It's considered a prototyping board, so you can make your circuits and you can test them using this just by putting the components in the holes. But you've got to know the basics of the breadboard. Now, as you watch my videos, you'll understand more about how they work, because I'm going to show you how they work using a multimeter. This video is getting, uh, this video is getting a little bit long, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to break it down, and I'm going to try to show you. This is a, a, a great diagram. Is, again, my pen, penmanship isn't that great, but let's try to go through it. There's usually a positive and a negative, usually blue, red and blue slot at the top, and a blue and a red slot at the bottom. I'm using green because I don't have a a blue marker. So these red are commonly used, the red slots are commonly used for a positive power supply, commonly, not always, and the blue, in this case green, is then usually for the negative slot. So what this is saying is each of these holes are, are all connected to each other. So they're all connected to each other, all little dots. So if I put five volts here, you're going to get five volts here. And the ground, if I put a ground, or a negative rather, here, it's connected also over here. Those are all connected together. And the same goes for the bottom. Now, here's, here's one thing. This is not automatically connected to this line. You actually have to take a piece of wire and connect if you want the top to equal the bottom, to be connected to the bottom. So if I want five, if I put five volts here, I don't automatically have five volts here. What I need to do is I need to take a piece of wire, a breadboard wire, and I need to connect it. But if I connect it here, automatically I know that it's whatever. If this is if there's a wire connected there, and I put five volts here, it's connected. So I'm going to have five volts in this slot because I know that these are all auto, by default connected. So the same goes for, now the different, here's where you do the main prototyping. Those are your power lines. Those are your two power lines, your positives and negatives. All these little black slots, they are connected vertically. So there's five on, five up and five down common, you know, commonly. So these five vertically are connected, these five vertically are connected, these five vertically are connected, these five vertically are connected. This is a separator. It's commonly used for chips. If you can see it from there, there's a separator. I can put a, a digital chip between here and here. So if I put a digital chip here, say I put a digital chip, uh, I put one, he, uh, one pin here, 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 one pin here. They're all going to be isolated. They're all going to be isolated. I'm going to use a better pen for this. So, but each of these pins, those spot, those pins that are attached, are all going to have five splicing slots or four splicing spl slots. So, alternatively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the tape and I'm going to show the board from a further away view so you can get an understanding of what I mean. So I know it may be a little bit hard to see, but again, here's a closer up of what I would do if I had a, a, a chip on my breadboard. Now, if you keep watching my videos, you're going you're gonna to see this firsthand. I'm going to show you a chip in a breadboard in a second. Uh, but here's an 8-pin digital chip. Here's that middle separator line. So we've got four pins on the top and four pins on the bottom. So we've got five holes. Each of these pins is taking up one of the holes. Uh, as seen before. So I know this is inside connected to this, is connected to this, is connected to this, is connected to this. So same goes for every single one internally. So I can use those slots to slice off whatever I need at that pin. So say I've got an output signal or an input signal I want to share with another pin. I can connect this hole to this hole and it's going to be connected to these two pins. So you're going to see this, I'm going to use my multimeter to show you in a minute. But just so we understand, it's not going to look like this on, on your breadboard. Within the breadboard, there are internal connections. So each of these pins are isolated from one another, but they've all, but they've all got those five splicing pins. So if you're having trouble understanding what I'm saying with this, please rewind the video 
go back to the beginning and watch it again. And because you gotta, you, those holes are there. You just gotta know which ones are connected. And if you watch my multimeter video, you'll you'll find better ways of going about testing this. So anyway, if you can't see above, I've got another uh, plug. You know, a red power line, green ground line, and we're gonna assume we're going to say assume we've taken a wire from up here and connected the ground to the ground line, and another one from the red from the positive line, the power line, to the net bottom one, just because it's easier that way. So if we want to connect, say, say we've got five volts on the power line, and we want five volts at pin eight, this is pin one, this is pin four, this is pin five, I'll just rip fill them all in two, three, five, six, seven, eight. We'll talk more about that pin, those types of pinouts later. But first of all, um, say we want five volts to pin eight. What we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to take a uh, just a wire, put a wire in any one of these holes that's connected to that to that pin rail, that vertical pin rail. Say this one. We're going to connect it into one of the five volt lines. So that will be connect that pin A will be connected to five volts. Say we want pin four to be connected to the ground line. Any one of these holes along pin four, we can connect to the ground line. And so that means that this pin, this little hole will be connected to ground, this will be connected to ground, this will be connected to ground, this will be connected to ground, and this pin will be connected to ground. So if we've got a tiny piece of wire and we don't have one long enough, long enough, we can just and we want pin 3 to be connected to ground as well, we can connect here to here, or any one of those holes. So now, all of these pins are connected to ground. So say we have an, an input signal of, and this you won't understand this fully, but say uh, a, it's just a small digital signal, a small 5 volt digital signal. And we want that at pin one. We can also we can attach that to pin one. Say we also want that exact same signal to pin two. We can connect that hole to that hole. So all these pins are shared. You see, I can do plug a whole bunch of things into the same one. Or at those pin, those holes of theirs are there to share to share whatever's at whatever's at this pin can be shared along those lines. So again, we want. We want pin 5 connected to the negative line. We want pin 7 to be connected to the 5 volt line. We want to leave uh, pin 6 alone. We don't have to do anything with it. Pin, or rather, let's, let's use pin 6 as an output. All those pins share the same signal. If, if 6 is a signal, has it offers an output signal, we can use that same output signal four different times because we've got four different holes. So this will become more apparent as my videos go on, but for right now I'll stop the tape and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Alright, we haven't talked about a multimeter yet. But we can measure a lot of things with the multimeter. I'm going to have a video specifically uh, made up for the multimeter. But here I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how to use the uh, um, continuity tester. What the continuity tester does is if if I measure along two lines that are connected or less than 200 ohms between the two, the point, we'll hear this. So if I measure a wire. Is that wire connected inside? Yes, it is. So what we can do with this is I can show you where connections are being made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you there aren't any color codes on this one. So it's up to you how you use it, but the configuration is still the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take one wire here and one wire here. And this is how you can test your breadboard take either the positive or negative, it doesn't matter, this is your positive and this is your negative. 
and connect it to one of them. And then I connect the other one, the other probe, to the other wire. It means that that is connected. Now if I take my red wire here on my right, which is right now connected to, as you can see, the same rail. If I put it on the rail below it, and I try to test for continuity, there's no continuity. Continuity means it's, it's, is it connected or not. So that's a good thing. Those lines are both isolated from each other. So now I'm going to show you, those are our power rails. Now I'm going to show you our proto rails. As you can see, one, two, three, four, five. These are connected to each other. Those five rails are isolated from everything else on the board except for each other. So, connected to each other. If I move this a slot to the right, not connected. If I move it below, not connected. But if I bring this wire down here to these five slots, connected. There's less than one ohm between here and here. So now I'm going to stop for one second. I'm going to put I'm going to put a chip in so you can see what I'm doing with it. So I've put a chip in. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this pin, pin 1, is connected to this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, vertically. So I can, test, I can test it by touching one of my probes to pin 1 and the other to the wire. Now if I touch one probe to the wire and to pin 2, not connected. So if I put it in the second slot for pin 2, any one of those five slots, four, four remaining slots, remember the pins of the chip take up one of the five slots. So let's test touch pin 2 to one of our probes and the wire to the other. Connected. If I put it in another one of the same five slots, remaining four slots. Remember, they're all connected. Touch to pin two. So again, they're isolated from each other. Pin one is connected to this hole, this hole, this hole, has this hole. Connected on the vertical plane. Pin two is connected to this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole on its vertical plane. Pin 3, this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole. Pin 4, this hole, this hole, this hole, and here, this hole. Alternatively, remember this is the separator line. Pin 5 is connected to this hole, this hole, this hole, this hole, and nothing else. All of these, ver all of these vertical planes are connected. So if I want to connect our two ground lines, let's assume like we had it on the board, because there's no color coding here. Let's assume that the red unit at the top, the red wire at the top is connected to the top the top uh, horizontal setup and that the white wire at the bottom is connected to the negative rail on the bottom. So if we want to connect the two negatives we're going to connect here hope you can see that to here. So we put so now the ground the the this layer right here this whole rail is connected to the second rail from the top. Now if we want to connect our power rail, we don't have to do this, but it just makes things a little bit easier. We can connect our top rail to the second from the bottom. Because we use, when we're prototyping, our power and ground lines quite a bit. So I hope you can see what I did there. Anyway, so now if we want to connect, remember, let's say red is our 5-volt line, 
and black is our ground line. Say we want to pin, connect pin 8 to our 5 volt line. Remember, this is pin 8. So one, with this one, this hole, this hole, or this hole, I can connect to any one of those holes and connect to the top, to the red line, to our 5 volt line. 5 volts, 10 volts, doesn't matter depending on whatever voltage we have at, the, at that line. So, alternatively, let's connect pin 3 to our ground line. Pin 3, any one of these four holes can be connected. So I'll connect it to that one, and I'll put it on our ground line. Say I've got an incoming signal I want to hook up from another breadboard or from another circuit on this particular breadboard. I can take a wire, say pin 1. Take this, put it anywhere on those four lines, on those four holes, connect it using this wire. So say I run out of long pieces of wire and I want to connect or that I've decided not to connect the top power and ground rails to the bottom power and ground rails. Say I want to connect pin 7, remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this being number 8. If I want to pick, connect pin 7 to ground, I already know that pin 3 is connected to ground, so I can take one of those four holes, or three remaining holes, and connect it to pin 7. You don't have to necessarily connect to the ground rail because it's in parallel. Everything will be connected to that ground line. So as of right now, pins 3 and 7 are connected to the ground line. So if I want to take a resistor, let's say, and connect pins 5 and 6 together using a resistor, putting a resistor between those two points, I'd have to take my resistor and put it in between 5 and 6 along any of those four holes. doesn't matter which ones, remember, because they're connected internally. So that's how a breadboard works. I hope it's pretty apparent if you've got a multimeter, as I said, you can always measure between two points using the continuity tester. And it usually says about 200 ohms. It says 200 ohms as an option. There will usually be a small indicator, a noise indicator. And if there is no noise indicator, you just have to read your meter, and if it says that when you connect, you're getting less than 200 ohms, usually you're looking for, when you're looking for something that's directly connected, you're going to get point zero or point something of an ohm. Very, very small resistance to see if something's connected. And that's what's called a continuity test. So we got lots more coming guys, I really hope that this video has helped and that um, you keep coming back to my eBay store because I, I like to help, I'm trying to keep this as practical as I, as I possibly can, I'm trying to keep as little math in it as possible because realistically for a lot of this stuff you just don't need it, you just need to understand how things are working. So thanks a lot for watching.